<clears throat> well, hello. How are we? It's uh, the 4th of May, and it's the first uh, episode of James Higgins' Mysterious World, which follows on from James Higgins' Mysterious Universe. It's a 10-episode series, James Higgins' Mysterious World, and this is episode 1. So, <clears throat> for a second, and we'll get started. Right, just one second. Here we go. Right. The legend of the vanishing hitchhiker hardly needs an introduction. The core story concerns a traveller who offers a ride to a vulnerable looking pedestrian only to find his passenger has disappeared without trace. Later investigations reveal that the passenger was a supernatural entity, not a living human yes. being at all. Of the well, hitchhiker story, so I'm going to tell you a hitchhiker story now. Here on my series, James Higgins, Mysterious World, Episode 1. Right, one second. <clears throat> Story 1, The Vanishing Hitchhiker. Here we go. One second. Uh, a man turns to his, a man turns to bid his unusual hitchhiker goodbye and discovers that she has disappeared from the car. He later learns that his mysterious passenger died several years earlier. Bloody hell. Story 1. Hey. Bloody hell. Here on James Higgins' Mysterious World, episode one. What a kick-off for this, eh? This series. What? One second and we'll get to story two. Story two. Right. Right, here, here we, we go. go. Right. Almost 40 years ago, a young tradesman from Bedfordshire decided he would play the Good Samaritan and pitch up a stranded traveller. It was to prove to be one of the most chilling and convincing paranormal encounters of modern times. Later in the evening of uh, 12th of October 1979, 26-year-old carpet fitter Ray F Roy Fulton from uh, Dunstable was returning home from a pub darts match in nearby Leighton Buzzard when he stopped to give a lift to a young man standing on an isolated stretch of Station Road on the outskirts of uh, Stanbridge. Notions of ghosts and the supernatural were Far from Fulton's mind as being an avid Liverpool supporter, he was casting his thoughts ahead to the following day's match and the prospect of his favourite team in the glare of the minivan's headlights. He saw a youth standing on the near side verge, uh, thumbing for a lift. During decided he was uh, going either to Totten Hall or Dunstable, Fulton came to a halt in front of the hitchhiker who walked along the road toward the van. He was casually dressed in dark trousers and jumper and wore a white coloured shirt. Nothing seemed out of the ordinary. The man opened their, just one second, opened their passenger door and got in. When asked where he wanted to go, his only response was to point ahead further down the misty road, Fulton let in the mini's clutch and the van pulled away. Just one second. The journey continued in silence for some minutes until Fulton decided to offer the youth a cigarette. It was the point where what had been a completely ordinary and familiar situation suddenly crossed over a threshold into the strange and frightening world of the unknown. I leant forward and picked up a packet of cigarettes, he uh, later recalled. Turned around to offer the lad one, and the man or boy was not sitting there. Stunned, Fulton pulled the mini to a halt and turned on the interior light. Looked into the back, thinking the youth had somehow climbed into the rear of the van. There was nothing there. Ray Fulton was completely alone. Now terrified, we uh, Fulton drove in a panic to his local pub, the glider in Lofer Road, Dunstable. Ashen, face and shaking, he blurted out his terrifying story to the landlord, Bill Stone, and a group of regulars. Two things haunted him about his uh, experience. That the airy, pale-faced youth was somehow part of an earlier traffic uh, accident which had not been reported. And secondly, that the sad, silent figure would somehow follow him home. 
Fulton was later interviewed by writer and researcher Michael Goss, and in 1985 took part in the respected television documentary series R.C. Clark's World of Strange Powers. On both occasions he told the same story without any deviation or embellishment that one night in October 1979 he took a, a ghost to a ride. Many countries as diverse and wide apart as Sweden, Pakistan, Canada, Korea and South Africa all have their individual and specific phantom hitchhiker tales but the experience of Bedfordshire motorist Roy Fulton ranks as one of the most compelling and thought provoking of all. Well, what do you make of that then, eh? Wow! Wow! Here on my channel, James Higgins, Mysterious World. One second and we'll get to story three. Here we are, this is story three. Uh, a time slip in Liverpool. I like time slips. I've actually been to uh, Liverpool, uh, where a lot of alleged uh, time slips happen. There's a little video I did on my channel, James Higgins Open World, so check it out. Uh, but here we go, right, story three. A time slip in Liverpool. Right, here we go. Uh, just one second. Just one second. Uh, just one second. Right, here we go. With a wealth of information available on time slips and books and the internet, many of the cases quoted are often quite old and occurred at least 30 years ago. One case that has recently come to public attention is that of an off-duty policeman. Where in July 1996 in Liverpool's Bolt Street, did an off duty Merseyside policeman inadvertently travel back in time while shopping with his wife in the city centre one Saturday afternoon? Frank and his wife split up to uh, buy from different shops. Carol, his wife, went to Dylan's bookshop while Frank went to a local record store. A small 1950s box van crossed in front of Frank, honking his horn in its progress. The van's livery stated it was from Kaplan's. He looked down to his feet and realised he was stood in the middle of the road. Frank crossed the road and saw that Dylan's book, book store now had a, a Crips signage over its entrance. And moreover, the shop was selling women's handbags and shoes rather than books. Looking around the street, Frank realised that the people he could see were dressed in the fashions from the 1940s. But strangely, a young woman in her 20s walked past him with a popular brand named Handbag. This reassured him that he was partially in 1996. He smiled at the girl as she walked past and entered Crips. As he followed her into the store, the interior of the building changed in a flash to that of Dylan's bookshop in 1996. Frank questioned the young woman who had entered with him into Crips. She confirmed that she too thought the shop was a clothes shop rather than a bookshop. Just it was second. recently proven that Crips and Kaplan's were actually businesses based in Liverpool during the 1950s. Whether they were based in the location specified in the story has not been confirmed. Frank's sighting offers numerous questions. If indeed it is true, did the box van driver see Frank as a ghost, something wearing strange clothing while standing in the middle of the street? Did other shoppers see him acting strange outside the crypt store in the 1950s? If he did appear, we have to rec record of anybody reporting such a sighting, which is a shame considering the implication if there were witnesses. As John Foreman indicates, like most paranormal experiences, there seems to be a trigger that in initiates the experience as a whole. I am surprised that these triggers have not been further investigated, especially when one looks at the links between the experiences of uh, migraines or users have hallucinatory drugs, there seems to be a general pattern that launches the witness into a seemingly alternate world. Well, there you go, that's story three. Here, here on the James Higgins' this Mysterious World, episode one. Get in there. Wasn't that good, eh? 
And I, I, I've been that street. Get in there. It's one of my videos, so check it out. Well, One second. It's man. story four. Uh, and it's not, too, it's not too far from where I live, really. Uh, naked wizard in Elderly Edge. Right. Just one second, and I'll read it to you. Here one we go. second. Sounds interesting. One of, of the, uh, one of the contenders for the most bizarre story is the tale of the naked wizard who turns up in Elderly Edge. Legend has it that a short old man with a long white beard has been spotted by witnesses running around the B5087 Macclesfield Road. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, however, when an officer attempted to intervene, an eerie happening took place. According to a police officer who approached the figure, the old man did quite the disappearing trick and simply vanished into thin air. Well, what can you say about that story four? Hey, unbelievable, eh? Let's get to story five. Right, here we go. Uh, this is the last story on the episode one of James Higgins's The Mysterious World. So, vanishing hitchhiker in Y. Bundbury. I hope, I hope I pronounced that right. Just one second. Here we go. This is the last story. An apparition of a hitchhiker at Y. Bunbury was the source of an ease for one motorist in 1996. It's reported that on October 20th that year, a driver picked up a male hitchhiker on the A51. The man was wearing old-style motorbike leathers, the kind, strange motorbike leathers, the kind, strange notice just a short while into the journey, the driver realised that the hitchhiker had disappeared completely. Although the seatbelt remained in the place and the door was locked. Well, I mean, you hear lots of these stories, don't you? Hey, another hitchhiker story there. Here on uh, my series, James Higgins, Mysterious World, Episode 1. Well, I hope you've enjoyed it. Uh, it's been a pleasure to do. Uh, well, Episode 2... Will be out in two weeks. Uh, it will be every two weeks. Uh, episode two will be out. Uh, just one second. I will tell you when the next episode comes out. Just one second. Well, it's the fourth of May today. Uh, so, episode two of James Higgins's Mysterious World will be out on the 18th of May. It's it. So, put it in your diary. The 18th of May. Episode 2, James Higgins' Mysterious World will be out. Uh, it's, it'll come out every two weeks. It's a 10-episode series, and then that will be it after 10, just like James Higgins' Mysterious Universe was. So you, you've just seen episode 1. I hope you've enjoyed it uh, as much as I've enjoyed doing it. Uh, and thank you to all my, all my subscribers. Uh, so thank you very much. If you like this episode, please subscribe. The button's down there. Thank you very much.